Okay, I just wanted to sort of talk quickly about some ways in which I um, practice and warm up tunes ready for improvisation. And the sort of uh, use of this process is twofold. The first thing is to familiarise myself with the song, the harmonic structure of the song and how to play through it. And the second thing is to um, kind of perhaps suggest some fresh ideas if I feel like I've gone into a bit of a rut. So I'm just going to present a few different ideas for this and um, we're going to use a short chord progression, which is the chord progression from Songe d'Auton, which is a nice gypsy jazz standard. It starts G minor, if you want to sit normally, D minor 6, and then E7, A7, and then D minor, and then maybe a D7 to set that up for the G minor again, okay? It's a nice little blowing section, and it's only like eight bars long, so it's an easy, good one to demonstrate this. Also, I've got to learn it, um, or I know it already, but kind of just work on it for a gig. Um, I want to get it really... I've never been particularly happy soloing over this particular combination of chords, so it's good to get more familiar with it. So one thing I would do is I would start by just familiarising myself with where the root notes are for each chord. And then... Put a bit of flat there. And then... And then... Maybe in this position, let's do the same thing. Fifth. And then. So this is obviously not improvisation, this is the groundwork for a learning improvisation. Maybe I'll now just do the thirds. One, two, one, two, three, four. And then, uh, sorry, I'd stop for a moment if you're not quite sure where you are. Oh, that's for the A, sorry. And maybe down here. Uh, hopefully here's easier. I kind of need to work up there, but I'll demonstrate it a little bit smoother down there. But remember that you want to work in the areas where you're not so sure. And it's okay to do this out of time as well, while you're kind of getting more familiar with it. So, there's thirds. Thirds here. Sometimes you lose the, the um, uh, context of it, so let's play that D minor form. Same here. Start with G minor, sorry. Okay, and now I can experiment with uh, sort of maybe just kind of incorporating ones and threes together. So uh, let's do. Uh, yeah. Start to get these little semitones between the two different chords. Um, so this practice is fifths. So that's on G minor, sorry. Okay, so an important place for, um, you know, and you can see how musical already it is. I expect, you know, it's really good to spend some time just with the triad. Here's a 
enclosures and sort of surrounds and party dome. Party dome as well if you want. And then back to D. Make it as four, you know. It's these little kind of between the, for example, the A major and D minor, there's a still like scale thing that comes up. It's an extremely common little scale fragment in jazz, actually. It's good to. So you can start to see these semitonal connections, and, and uh, it, it starts to become much more musical. Um, in jazz, G gypsy jazz in particular, it's quite important to have the sound of the sixth and the minor chords. It's kind of quite a common. And then on D. And then we're going to use the sevenths on this. So again, it's yeah, just pulling it up a little bit. We could um, just concentrate on the sixths and the sevenths. So it's not the G minor, so I keep forgetting to do that. And then we do seventh. Uh, seventh of the. So we'll play the ninths on this chord as well. Especially on the flat ninths on the dominant chords and up here. Very gypsy jazz that sound. Start to get diminished chords if we put in the flat ninths as well, and that's a very gypsy jazz sound. So, along with chromatic party tones. To get like the full the full gamut of vocabulary that we need really to play the style of music, just by um, you know just by going step by step through it. Um, but it's good just to sort of you know focus your improvisation maybe on one note within each chord, so the sixth for a bit. Seventh on this chord. So you go. You're doing Flavor, right? Um, if you play the same stuff all the time, then it can make it sound a bit, you know, well, boring because you're playing the same stuff all the time. Um, another exercise which I use is obviously, you know, playing the arpeggios through the, the sequence. Uh, sorry, I start on G minor. I keep starting on D minor, which is uh, part of my problem with this tune actually. sound like actual improvisation um, but hopefully not too uh, set you know you don't want to get too much into the licks licks are great um, but uh, a solo should perhaps be composed of 
um, and maybe 50% licks and 50% actual improvisation. The, the sort of ratio varies from night to night and player to player, um, but I wouldn't want to play 100% licks. But also if I played 100% improvisation, then uh, I wouldn't be able to play any sort of, you know, just just fast things that you can just go and because, oh wow, you know. So maybe maybe 70, 70 30 might be a better a better ratio, I don't know. But I, don't, I don't, certainly don't want to be a completely licky player um, while I don't, you know, completely disavow licks. I think they have their place. Um, especially in this style of music, which is quite a licky style of music. Gypsy jazz, that is. And swing. So, uh, I mean, the other thing is the Barry Harris method, which I, I just run scales using that. This is a very good exercise for learning your changes. So we're going to use a minor. Solid minor. Okay, and then for this one, this is going to be a minor dominant, so we use the... Uh, Actually, the G7, and then uh, so that's the G7 going down to G sharp, which covers the E7 flat nine chord. So we're going to do a C7 going down to C sharp. Might seem a bit weird, but it works. Okay, so we can go. Each time. So the scales go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know, on each one, or if they're descending, which we have to do for these kind of minor dominant things, then they start on the 7th, descend down to the, the sharp 1, which happens to be the 3rd of the chord. Um, that might be a bit confusing if you haven't done it before, and there is a separate video somewhere out there where I explain it. I don't really want to get too far into it today. I mean, if you're not happy with that, you could just play the... Um, you know, the Phrygian dominant. I mean, it might seem funny that um, Barry does it this way. It's just, but, you know, it does actually make sense. The reason why he does it this way is because you can then adapt some of your major key dominant language and play it on the minor ones. Um, I think, as far as I know, doesn't always explain why he does, uh, why we do things. So, G minor. D minor. And then uh, this thing, which is, um, I have to try and remember what it is now. Uh, G7. And then C7. And then. We're going to go into F7. Like that, and then. Sometimes my brain shuts down when doing this. G7, C7, and then F7. Uh, oh, sorry, we do that. Let me try and play that through so you can actually hear it. So I'm just kind of learning that myself, it's not something I've done that much. Um, let me just try it down here again. So. And then uh, G7. And then it's S7. And then uh, G7. Oh, sorry. That's all good. I mean, you want to practice that in different areas of the neck, so so here would be good as well. So different registers, first of all, and then D. And then we're going to do the G7, uh, which will have to be um, here. G. So I'm not sure that's 
starts to be quite a brain teaser but if you just go through around all these things consistently through any changes I mean there's other exercises you can do you can practice playing thirds on everything you know thirds on the scale so let's try that for two bars and then let's um perfect at this, but the process of doing it starts to give you more freedom, so when you actually come to solo... Sort of work on the, you know, the riffs and things that you like to play. Um, but you know, I think like that's that's a good way to prepare a tune. I think if you just do half an hour on that, then what will happen is you will, uh, you know, really it will really start to open up. You know, and you've got to learn all the different positions. I've mostly based my work around these two positions, but it'd be good to know these ones as well. This is all the more reason to practice it, really. Anyway, I hope you found it useful and uh, will help you with your own tune learning. Thanks for watching.